Hey, everybody, it's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and we answer questions that you've sent in, emailed in, mailed in, and we have a ton of stuff to go over, so we better jump in, sugar. All right, Joe. What are some things I can teach my sons about preparing for marriage? I didn't have a successful marriage with their father, and I'm worried they won't trust me. Oh, they'll listen to you. Trust is a funny thing, you know. You learn from people that make mistakes better than you learn from people that didn't make any mistakes. You know, I can tell you what not to do. Don't do this and don't do this. That didn't work. And so don't be bold and share, you know, uh, speak your mind. Yeah. I remember one time I used to say to my son, don't ever tell a woman, hold on. I said, that just is, that just is a trigger for me. Don't say, hold on. If I say, come here, come here now. But it was actually, they learned a lot living with the, his sister and, and, and me. We, we made him a great husband. He is a awesome man. Because of. He is a awesome man. But listen, this is so funny. He was, uh, was here for the Valentine's Day, his first year with, who is his now his wife. Yeah. And she was going to school in Orlando and he was driving over there and I called him and and we were talking while he's driving over there. And I said, now, what did you get her for Valentine's Day? And he goes, oh, mom, we're just nothing. She, she's not like that. I go, son, I'm going to tell you right now, if you, you stop at Publix and get flowers, if that's all you can do, I'm not kidding you. You get something. I, I mean, for the next 10 minutes, I'm just talking hard as I can. Blah, 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 blah. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, okay. I can tell he wasn't going to do it. <laughs> so uh, he didn't do it. Well, they broke up the next day. Whoa. <laughs> and his little bottom lip was oh, hanging on. Man. I was miserable for a couple of weeks. They, 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 and I said, thank the Lord she gave him another chance. Now, to this day, if she ever says, I would like something, he's got a thing on his phone <laughs> that da, 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 he keeps a list of. Yeah. It. And if you ask him at any given time, hey, what would she like for her birthday? He'd go, hang on just a second. <laughs> Let, you know, he'll give you the list. of. of, of he's a wise man. So he learned. There are no perfect men. There's just getting back up men. There are men that learned it. What'd you learn? Don't do that again. I learned. Yeah, just talk to them. One, yeah. I, 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 I'm going to tell this story, right? Yes. One day I was driving on the road and I had about a car full of adolescent boys. <laughs> well, I think they forgot I was in the car. Uh, and we're all driving on the road and they go, when I get married, I'm on a do 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 And they're just talking away. Like, you know, they're just some big. Yeah, man on we campus. know what's going on. And so I, I let them go for a minute. They weren't being ugly about her. I think they were just talking like they were just knew everything, you yeah. know. And I said, I said, Father, I said, well, if you do that, you're going to be this one sad man <laughs> on, your, on your honeymoon. And this guy, this kid who's doing all the talking goes, what do you mean? I go, well, let me just tell you a story. I knew a guy who was just like that. And he just did what he wanted to, never taking into account his wife. So, but then I knew another guy that the, he knew they'd had a big wedding and it was late at night when they got to the hotel. And he said, I, sweetie, I know you're tired. Why don't you just take a bath? And tonight we'll just hold one another. And then he said the next day, why don't we just take some time and just touch one another? And then at third day, when she was relaxed and ready, then he decided, then they decided together what the next steps Ooh. were going to be. <laughs> so these kids are all sitting there listening. Their, their mouths are wide open. And I said, uh, so now let me ask you a question. Which woman do you think has the better memory <laughs> that wants to please her husband and wants Ooh. to make sure that, he, that he's his, a happy he, man. his needs are met? Is it the woman who her husband was selfless and gave really was thinking about her or was it the selfish man who just did what he wanted, not taking into account how she was, because really she's the crown. Yeah, buddy. She's to be honored oh, and treated man. with love and respect. Oh man. Well, so they're just sitting there listening. I mean, you could have heard a pin drop and he goes, then this dude get this guy goes, dude, we had it all wrong. <laughs> Woo. So, there's probably several wives from the, that little car boys. That are <laughs> yeah, very oh, glad. Yeah, very right. thankful. Yeah, but I'm just going to say that um, talking to your son, I was always very open and honest yeah. with my kids. Yeah. We talked about everything. Yeah. 
And um, I would and still do to this day. Yeah, we still do to this. Oh, for sure. I mean, I remember one time my son was probably 11 or 12 and he came around the corner and I said, well, I don't know what you got behind your back, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> and uh, he goes, he, he pulls out a Victoria's Secret catalog. And I said, come here, sit down. Let's talk about that for just a minute. <laughs> and I go, well, first of all, I'm, I think it's wonderful that you're interested in women. But I said, here's the problem with stuff like this, because this then a woman becomes a, just an object to you to fulfill your needs. But godly, the godly way to look at a woman is, again, somebody that you honor and respect is your crown. Yes. And so I always think about when I see women like that, that that's somebody's daughter and that's somebody's sister. Yes. And I said, would you want people to look at your sister that way? No and he would. said, no, he loves his sister, very protective. And I said, exactly. So honor the fact that that's somebody's sister and somebody's uh, daughter. And and uh, so or somebody's mother. Yeah, mother. I mean, he and he was great. He was great. But, um, you know, the more I talked to him, the, him, you know, I think the better man he became. Yes. Yeah. Everybody's looking for truth. They just don't know what it is. It gets clouded sometimes, but everybody's looking for truth. Truth that sets you free. What do you want? I want to know the truth. What's the truth about this? Well, this is, well, I never heard that. Nobody ever told me that. That's because most guys in locker rooms are in the hallway talking trash. They don't know what the truth is. They're trying to brag about something. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. Exactly. So, so just be honest with them. Tell them what a woman likes. They want to know. Yep, they do. Okay, Joe, after my last marriage, I never thought I would find love again. I have recently remarried, but we're having a hard time trying to integrate our families together. Just so you know, we are older and our kids are grown and out of the house. Well, we can relate to that a bit. I think we can. <coughs> well, my kids my kids were like, uh, thank God. We, we thought we were going to have to take care of her. <laughs> yeah, somebody took mom off her hand. God bless her, whoever he is. We don't care, but God bless. Uh, yeah, I mean, your daughters particularly have had a difficult time. Yes, the other side of the family is different. Yeah. Now they're coming around, but they're coming around slow. It's like, well, Dad, how could you love someone besides mom? Because I was married to their mother for 45 years. So, well, because your mom died, she went to heaven. She's not thinking about me in heaven. I'm not on her mind in heaven. She's in eternity. It's the mir miraculous place. You read about Revelation just to get a glimpse of heaven is an incredible place. They're not crying. They're not slobbered. They're not thinking about the past. It's called eternity for a reason. The throne of God's there. The river's coming through the middle. The trees are blossoming everywhere. It is phenomenal. There's nobody's old. Everybody's the same age. It's like it is called heaven for a reason. So anybody's gone to heaven, they're not thinking about us down here. We're down here, though. I don't care who went to heaven. They left. So I remember I tell people, I cried nonstop for six weeks. My wife died. I couldn't stop crying. I mean, I I'd talk normal that I'd cry. And I talked normal that I'd cry. And so six weeks I woke up on a Saturday morning after my wife died and I heard God say to me, now this is just me. This is me. I heard God say, shut up, get up and get busy. And I thought, you're right. I can't think about my wife. She's gone. She's gone to heaven. She's fine. She's thrilled. She's having a good time. Me. I still got bills to pay stuff to do down here. I got a ministry to fulfill. It's like, I got to get busy. And so I, I tell people, When's the last time you cried over your wife? I said, well, almost six years ago when she died. I haven't cried since. I haven't cried since at all. I don't even think about it. And so an angel has talked to me every day. said, you ever think about your first wife? I said, no, I don't. And before God, then that may not make me good or bad. It's like, but I don't, I don't think about it. Why? I got, I got angel in my life. I'm in love. And God's got a great sense of humor. When Abraham, when Sarah died, Abraham got remarried. You read this in the Bible. Abram got remarried and had six more kids. Now he was a hundred when she died. So I don't know how old he is, but he's still dropping babies like rain out of heaven. I'm sure somebody interviewed him. Hey, baby, you ever think about Sarah? Who? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I'm thinking about my new wife. <laughs> the fact is they're, they're, they may never come around. Nope. They because, may not because they're adults and they have a will and you, you know, your authorities changed with them once yes. they became adults. What you should do is focus on living your life. Be yes. as kind as you can be. Yes. Be as 
generous as you can be, but really you should focus. But I'm not going out of my way to give you the time of day. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be miserable because of no. your choices. No, because you, you can't change what other people think or what other people feel. This It's called a God. It's a God factor. You'll have to stand before God when they give an account of what you thought, what you said, what you dreamed up. You have to give an account for your own life. I'll have to give an account of my life. So I want to make sure I'm living a good, clean life. I repent every day. I forgive every day. The Bible says the righteous fall seven times, seven to get back up. I'm not the perfect person. I'm just the getting back up person. But I know how to repent and forgive every day. I don't hold anything against anybody. I don't care what you did. God bless you. Go with God. God bless you. But we don't know what they did. I don't care what they did. God bless you. You let it go. You let it go. Your cares over you God. Cares yeah, you to can't you. live your life for no. somebody else like that. No. All right. I'm out of patience for my husband who never picks up the home. <laughs> sound, sound familiar? Uh, as, we have a club we belong to, guys. Uh, no, don't pick up. Uh, as the wife, I'm happy to do my part. But how can I get him to do this? His. Leave it in the floor. Well, no, that doesn't work. And I'm going to tell you why. Because one time I decided to let my son's room go. <laughs> and it oh, was Lord. it was a pigsty. And one day I go in there and he's just in the middle of it playing video games. And I said, son, doesn't this bother you? And he looked around. And he goes, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Now, if you ever got mad, which is so rare, he really doesn't have much of a temper, but. If he ever did, then he cleaned his room yeah. really good. We always knew when he was mad because his room was suddenly <laughs> spotless. You know what? I would say ask him. Yes, politely ask him. Because uh, Joe, on his own, doesn't pick up stuff. But if I say, Joe, would you take out that garbage? I will. Joe, will you do this? Will yes. you do that? Would you put that laundry in? Don't say you never take out the trash. You never pick your laundry. You ne don't yell at them. Don't just tell them what to do. You know, when I was young, stuff like that would make me miserable. And I, you know, and I'd make my husband miserable. <laughs> and But now having a 12 year time where I didn't date or anything. And now that I'm in a marriage, I, th those things are just so. They it's don't matter. That big a deal, it, guys. it just doesn't matter. You know, I mean. My grandmother said to me once, right before she died, she said, you know, if I had to live my life over again, I'd let those baseboards get a little dusty. Come on. I'd let uh, I'd let some laundry pile up a little it's bit. It's not a heaven or hell issue. I'd let the dishes sit in the sink a little bit longer, and I would enjoy the people in my life a little bit more. Oh, come on. And I thought, man, I don't want to have to say that. Nope. I want to enjoy the people in my life, every opportunity I get. Yes. And so that's what I encourage you to do. It's not a hill that's worth dying on. So just say, hey, sweetie, would you mind while you're in there watching TV dusting? Would you no. mind picking up the kids uh, toys before you go to bed? They'll love you for it. Yeah. They'll love you. He for won't it. mind doing it. No, he, he'll just do it. But honey, it, He's never going to see it. <laughs> no, he's not. So saying you never, you should have, you could have, it won't work. I'll come into Joe's office sometimes and there'll be spoons and forks from who knows when. And I'll just pick them up. Don't say a word. Well, stick them in get the about a dozen. It's not worth going to the kitchen. I'll wait till I get about a dozen. Yeah, but he, what he doesn't get since he's new to Florida, we have a thing here. Doesn't matter how clean your house is, they're called roaches. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And they're very attracted to oh, dirty dishes. Oh. So we have our own challenges over here at the McGee house. <laughs> and the biggest challenge is Mr. McGee himself. <laughs> Whoa, put my name on the bill from her. How about this? I'm going to pray for you and your husband. You pray for me. <laughs> hey, we love you guys so much. Hey, today, let's, ble let's pray a blessing on families today, yes. will you? Father, we thank you for those that are listening, those that are watching. Father, we pray a great blessing on everyone who has ears to hear, Father. Yes. We say take blindness from our minds, enlighten the eyes of understanding, send labors across yes, our path, yes. grow us up, place us Amen. in the middle of your will in the last days. Don't leave us on the sideline, Father. Right. Put us in the middle of your will in the last days. We say thank you for it yes. in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless. Guys. Your family, and you are highly blessed this week. Amen. We love you. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God could do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. 
please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.